Okay, we're recording. Okay. Here we go. This is chapter three, writing Dadza Bao. Who would have believed that our entire educational system was wrong after all? 17 years after liberation, the newspaper told us our schools were not bringing us up to be good so red socialists and communists as we had thought, but revisionists. We thanked heaven that Chairman Mao had started this cultural revolution and that the Central Committee of, Commun of the Communist Party had uncovered the mess in our schools. Otherwise, we would not have even known that we were in trouble. What a frightening idea. One Monday, all school classes were suspended indefinitely. All students were directed instead to participate in the movement by writing big posters, dots about criticizing the educational system. Rolls of white paper, dozens of brushes, and many bottles of red and black ink were brought into the classrooms. The teachers were nowhere to be seen. The classrooms buzzed with revolutionary fervor. Students spread large sheets of paper on desks and gathered around, eagerly shouting suggestions. Some roamed the rooms, reading the comments aloud over, over people's shoulders, calling to others. Girls and boys ran outside to put up their dots of bow and ran back in to write more. Desks, ping pong tables, and even the floor were taken over by, for writing dots of bow. When the white paper was gone, the students used old newspaper instead. Dots of bow were everywhere, in classrooms, along the hallways, and even on the brick walls of the schoolyard. The row of tall parasol trees that lined the inside of the school inside the schoolyard was festooned with, with more dots of bow hanging like flowers from the branches. Long ropes strung across the playground were covered in, with still more dots of bow looking like laundry hung out to dry. I, start, I stared at the large sheet of paper spread out in front of me, wondering what to write. It was strange. When I had read the newspaper, I had been enraged by the revisionist educational system that had been poisoning our youth for so many years. But now that I'd actually had to criticize the teachers who taught us every day, I could not find anything really bad to say about any of them. I went over to Annie's desk. Just as I guessed, the papers in front of her and her seatmate, Jiang Jie, were also blank. I just can't think of anything to write, I complained. Neither can we. I might as well just give up. Annie put her brush down and stretched. Hey, everyone has to write something. You're no exception. Do you want everyone to think that you have a bad political attitude? Jiang Jie was joking, but it made us think. Why don't we go on? Why don't we go out to the playground to see what everyone else is writing? Zhang Jie went on, it's better to copy something than not, write, than not to write anything at all. What do you say? We walked out to the schoolyard. The classroom had been crowded, but there were even more students outside. Du Hai was shouting, hey, this is great. Everybody, look at what Popper's done. She put the principal's name upside down. Ragged looking Popper smiled with, effect, with satisfaction. I saw my big sister writing one last night. She wrote the name upside down and then put a big red X over it. She said that that's what the court used to do to criminals. The three of us stopped before Dodds about signed an anti-revisionist. Annie read aloud, although teachers do not hold bombs or knives, they are still dangerous enemies. They fill us with insidious revisionist ideas. They teach us that scholars are superior to workers. They promote personal ambition by encouraging competition for the highest grades. All of these things are intended to change good young socialists into corrupt revisionists. They are the invisible, invisible knives that are even more dangerous than real knives or guns. For example, a student from Utsai High School killed himself because he, because he failed the university entrance examination. Brainwashed by his teachers, he believed his sole aim in life was to enter a famous university and become a scientist. Hey, I stopped her in, in surprise. This was all copies from, copied from the youth post. I read it the other day. So what? It's always okay to copy dots about, Jiang Jie said. She turned to another dots about, look, this one is by Yin Lan Lan. Yin Lan Lan had written, as one of its victims, I denounced the revisionist educational system. Being from a working class family, I have to do a lot more housework than, than students with, from rich families. So I have difficulty passing exams. I was forced to repeat grades, repeat grades three times, and I was not allowed to be a young pioneer or to participate in the school choir. The teachers only think of grades when evaluating a student. They forget that we, the working class, are the masters of the socialist country. Yin Lan Lan, a victim? I was flabbergasted. Yin Lan Lan had flunked three times. She rarely spoke up in class. When she, was, when she was asked to answer a question, she would just stand there without saying a word. She was not very bright. She failed three courses out of five. How could she blame the teachers for that? An Yi sneered. Zhang Jie slumped her shoulders and bowed her head in, imita in imitation of Yin Lan Lan. We burst out laughing and immediately looked 
looked around to see if anyone was watching us. Zhang Jie made a face. Sheet after sheet, article after article, each Dan Zabao was a bitter accusation. One was titled, Teacher Lee, Abuser of the Young. The student had failed to hand in her homework on time, and Teacher Lee had told her to copy the assignment over five times as punishment. Another student said his teacher had deliberately ruined his, his students' eyesight by making them read a lot so they could not join the Liberation Army. Still another accused Teacher Wang of attempting to corrupt a young revolutionary by buying her some bread when he learned that she had not eaten lunch. The more I read, the more puzzled I became. Did the teachers really intend to ruin our health and corrupt our minds? If so, why hadn't I ever noticed? Was I so badly taken in that I was unable to see them for what they really were? I remember Du Hai's taunt. You teacher's obedient little lamb. I thought of Teacher Gu, who was like a stern but loving mother to me. I thought of An Yi's mother, Teacher Wei, who had won so many model teachers award because of her dedication to her work. No matter how hard I tried, I just could not relate to them. To, I could not relate them to the villains described in the Dots of Bao. To fulfill my responsibility as a revolutionary, I listed all my teachers. One by one, I considered them carefully. Unfortunately, none of them seemed to hate the party or oppose Chairman Mao. I could not write a Dodds about, about any of them. Finally, I decided to copy an article from the newspaper instead. A few days later, when I got to school, I was told we were going to post Dodds about on the houses of some of the bourgeoisie living near the school. The class was divided into two groups. One was going to confront Old Qian, a stern and frightening man who stalked our alleys speaking to no one. The other group was going to challenge Jiang Shi Wen, an unpleasant woman who lived in a house behind the schoolyard. I was assigned to the group going to Jiang, to Jiang Shi Wen's house. Of course, this was not a coincidence, not at all. They all knew that she was my relative. Aunt Shi Wen was, was really my father's cousin, but I always called her aunt. She was at least 50 years old, but she dressed stylishly and wore makeup, and so, so she looked closer to 30. I knew my class, classmates did not like her one bit. What makes her think she's so wonderful, they sneered. Just look at all, the, all those clothes she's got from her sister in America. Look at her makeup, bourgeois, disgusting. I had always disapproved of her too. Chairman Mao taught us that inner beauty is much more valuable than outward, outward appearance. How could she ignore what Chairman Mao said? Song Popo had told me that even Aunt Shi Wen's youngest son often grumbled about his mother's behavior. Just a few weeks earlier, Aunt Shi Wen had complained to the school because some students had climbed into her yard to pick mulberry leaves for their silkworms. This latest affront was too much for the students to bear. About 20 of us 